For most of human history, we live like most other animals on the planet. Up until only a few thousand years ago, the average human life consisted of finding food, building shelter, and trying not to get eaten. As you can probably imagine, these activities didn't leave much time for thinking about the universe, our place in it, or what that meant. However, after the rise of civilization and technology, humans have had a lot more time on their hands. And because of this, we've started to spend that time asking questions about the world we live in. One of these questions. Is the universe designed for us? A good way of answering this question is by looking outside the comfort of our planet and more at the universe as a whole. Given you're an average viewer of this channel, chances are you're living on Earth. It's reasonably warm here, with varied seasons, and overall a good climate. But when we start looking out into space, and what it's like out there, we get a glimpse of how rare this hospitability really is. A good place to start is the other planets in the solar system. Let's say you're in a spaceship and your friends push you out onto the surface of Mercury. First of all, you need to get new friends. Second of all, you'd go unconscious within a few seconds due to the lack of oxygen and outside pressure, and cook within minutes due to the intense heat from the sun. If you're on the day side, that is. On the night side, you'd at least be safe from the sun, but you'd also lose body heat to the ground, freeze, and die from oxygen starvation. On Venus, you wouldn't even have time to realise you were there, and the hellish temperatures of over 400 degrees Celsius would cook your body almost instantly, and the surface pressure of over 90 times that of Earth would render you a smouldering pile of char within seconds. On Mars, the slightly stronger atmosphere than Mercury wouldn't act as a warming factor. Rather, it would provide a medium for heat to escape your body, and within a few seconds you'd die from hypoxia, and depending on the season, the extreme cold. Even going near Jupiter, you'd be fried by the magnetic field, before plunging into the vast atmosphere, freezing, and eventually being crushed by the immense pressure. The same would happen on Saturn and Uranus, but with a weaker magnetic field on both planets, your inevitable death would be slower, and more drawn out. On Neptune, you'd die quite similarly, except that the planet has a slightly more interesting way of ending you. On Neptune, the wind can pick up to over 2,000 miles per hour, meaning on entering the atmosphere you'd freeze solid, before being smashed into a million pieces and spread all around the giant planet. Almost every other object in the solar system is a bare, freezing rock, none supporting any sort of life for more than a few seconds. These, however, are only the planets of our solar system. Over the course of modern astronomy, several thousand other planets and star systems have been discovered. While some come close, exactly zero contain a planet we know could harbour life as we know it. As far as humans have looked, every other planet in the universe is completely uninhabitable, and landing there would result in death almost instantly, if not within a few minutes. So far, almost 4,000 exoplanets have been discovered, and I'd say that's a pretty good sample size. And if you think of those as potential Earths, that's a lot of times the universe has tried and failed to create us. From what we know, there are an average of 1.6 planets per star, and with an average of 100 billion stars in a galaxy, and a trillion galaxies in the observable universe, that's 160 sextillion planets that could have become Earth-like, and only one was in the right initial conditions to ultimately produce us. So, alright you say, most of the universe might be inhospitable to humans, but there are still the physical constants that govern how the universe evolves, and if these constants were only a tiny bit different, we wouldn't have existed. And, while this is almost certainly true, there are explanations for it. One of them is the multiverse theory. Basically, what this theory states is that our universe isn't alone. There are many, perhaps infinite more, out there, each with their own set of constants. Some expanding too fast, stretching so thin no particles can interact, some expanding too slow, collapsing in on themselves. In others, nothing has mass, and so everything moves around at the speed of light, with no time passing. Our universe, by chance, happened to be the one, or just one of the universes that have the right physical constants and initial conditions, such that stars could form, planets could form around those stars, and life could form on those planets. And we live in this suitable universe because it's the only one we can live in. But hey, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and until the proposers of the multiverse provide that evidence, it's down there with Team God at the moment. Another explanation is the simulation hypothesis. In a 2003 paper by philosopher Nick Bostrom, he states that at least one of the following assumptions must be true. Humans are highly likely to go extinct before becoming post-human and simulating universes of their own. Any other civilization is very unlikely to run many simulations of their own universal history. We are almost certainly living in a simulation. The theory then goes on to suggest that not only humans are highly likely to become extremely technologically advanced, but also that it's almost certain that there are other civilizations out there that have the ability to run their own simulations. 
And because this means that at least one of these civilizations, if not thousands of them, will go on to run millions of simulations, there will be far more fake universes than the actual universe, meaning we are probably living in one. This is pretty convincing, but it doesn't come without issues. For starters, it's almost impossible to prove right or wrong. If some civilization above us were able to run simulations of the entire universe, chances are they'd be able to make it pretty convincing. The only real way to prove that we're not living in a simulation is prime numbers. Prime numbers are probably spaced out in a completely random order, with no pattern that can predict them. If there is found to be infinite prime numbers with no pattern, chances are we're living in a real universe, simply because of the fact that storing infinite numbers in a computer is impossible. But since there's no way to prove an infinite amount of prime numbers, the simulation hypothesis is pretty much unfalsifiable. And even so, you could still ask the question of how the real universe was suitable for life, so it gets us close, but not there. Lastly, and probably most likely, is that our universe, alone or part of a multiverse, was almost certain to have life in it. We only know of one kind of life, carbon-based life. For all we know, there could be an infinite number of forms life could take, probably limited to a few in our universe, but a universe with different laws of physics may be just as likely to produce some form of life. Even if the odds of forming life in one of these universes is vastly unlikely, universes are big, so even very rare things are bound to happen at least a few times. As far as humans have looked, we're completely alone. We live on a small world in both terms of space and time. It's often said that the physical constants were just the right value to allow life to form, with a slight difference resulting in a collapsing universe or one expanding too fast. But if you think about it, the universe in terms of its physical constants is unsuited to life. We live in a very young universe, while things, for a brief time, are life-supporting. In the next trillion years or so, star formation will cease, and therefore so will life as we know it. The universe, assuming protons don't decay, could last up to an estimated 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 120 years, a number so large it's impossible to imagine. Like, you literally cannot write that number down. If you were to begin writing it today, you would finish long after the last stars had finished burning long after the black holes had evaporated by Hawking radiation, and a trillion times longer than that, even. That means that the universe will have only been able to support life for practically an infinitesimal fraction of its entire lifetime. It is most definitely not made for us. So, humans are the result of billions of years of evolution, adapting to and changing the environment around it. If the universe is a glass, we're the water. If the universe is a crumpet, where the butter, maybe, I don't know. Thing is, we've survived nature and everything it's thrown at us so far, but that's because we've adapted to it ourselves over billions of years. It most certainly wasn't designed for us. Thanks for watching.